Join now for the latest on COVID-19 and other health-related matters in the region by Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Paul Romiliotis. Welcome back to the show, doctor. Good to be back. All right, so we'll start with a virus uh, that's not COVID, uh, but we did see a human test positive for the West Nile virus. Yes, we did. We had an elderly individual who tested uh, positive for West Nile, vial, West Nile virus, and uh, it doesn't surprise me. We usually see um, this type of activity towards the end of August into September, October. So we know that the West Nile virus uh, is carried by a mosquito. We have been testing the mosquitoes and we haven't found any positive pools, but we had a positive human case. Um, and as you know, the symptoms vary from just a mild cold to uh, in elderly individuals or people with chronic medical conditions. It can be uh, more serious like seizures and, and infections of the brain and that type of thing. So uh, we still uh, want to be able to send out a message that, you know what, we, we're getting towards the end of the summer. We know but you know, mosquitoes are still around until everything freezes. Sometimes it goes well into September, into October. So it's still uh, important when you're going outdoors to take the necessary precautions to protect yourself and your family from mosquito bites and also do your best to decrease the uh, uh, ability of mosquitoes to grow around your home because you know they grow in pools of water. So make sure that, you know, empty pools are empty. They're not, they don't have water in them. Um, and tires don't, you know, spare tires that are lying around in the backyard don't accumulate water. Uh, pails don't accumulate water. Recycle, bin, recycle bins put some holes in them so they won't accumulate water. So that's quite important. Uh, absolutely. And as you mentioned, for some cases, it may be mild, but uh, we hope it doesn't get to that point. But if someone maybe th thinks that they may have it, what are some of the warning signs that maybe they should go get tested? Um, first of all, it, it, it shows you uh, there's a fever. Uh, there's no rash, but really you have a severe headache. Um, it's like you have the flu. It's like a real, um, it's, it's, they're nonspecific symptoms, but in most situations, very bad headache, stiff neck. Uh, sometimes lose loss of consciousness, um, even seizures. So those are very severe symptoms. But if people are feeling unwell and have fever, particularly if they have neck pain or head or their severe headache that they've ever had before, those are the signs to go get assessed. All right, and another uh, uh, disease uh, in the area. We know that uh, several weeks ago, uh, several bats tested uh, positive for rabies, and uh, there has been more positive tests. We had we just had a third one test positive in our area. And um, as a matter of fact, it's the first time I've seen three bats test positive. We know that bats carry uh, rabies, but this is just another uh, uh, warning to, uh, to, to us that, you know, it's around. Uh, and so one of the messages that we want people to know, and we will be sending out uh, some more information about this. Number one, obviously, be bat aware. Uh, if you get bitten by a bat, don't, uh, don't, you need to go to the hospital. We need to treat you because, like I said, uh, we do have rabid bats in the area. It doesn't mean that every bat is rabid, but three in a row uh, tells me that we have rabid bats in our area. And as you know, uh, ra once rabies uh, infects a human being, it takes, by the way, after you're bitten, it takes about sometimes four to six weeks to get symptoms. But once the symptoms start, you die. Like there really is no treatment. So we need we have shots and vaccines that we give people serum um, when when they're bitten that will prevent uh, the infection. So we uh, so we need to be very aware that if you get or you think you got in contact with a bat, go to the emergency room and we'll give you the treatment because we don't want to take any chances. The other thing that we've been seeing as well is that we've been getting a lot of people calling us with bat infestations, we've been seeing a lot of bats. And this is the time of year that bats, the juvenile bats are coming out and starting to fly. And so, uh, it, and some people tell us they wake up and they have like 10 bats in their, in their home. So it's important to, um, you know, bat proof your home, make sure that you cover, put some, uh, some chicken wire or other netting uh, in areas where they can come in. And we'll be having some more information on our website to, to guide people on that one. Absolutely. Now, uh, of course, related to COVID-19, uh, it uh, continued to stay quiet, uh, but we did uh, hear reports uh, on Wednesday about a, uh, an, an out another outbreak in the region. Yes, we had an outbreak in a, in a group home in Prescott Russell, and um, uh, it, the individual who, uh, who uh, was positive worked at that, uh, at, that, at that group home, but lives in Quebec. So that's why it did not count as a, as a case in our area. But because that individual worked in, in, that, uh, in that institution, we, uh, and as you know, anytime, even one case uh, positive, we declare it as an outbreak. 
All right, and of course, uh, uh, last week we spoke about uh, the back to school plans. Uh, we know that it continues to be top of mind for most parents, uh, and I know that you've been working both with the school boards, but also uh, in terms of public education, uh, and there's a lot of parental concerns, and I think two uh, that are top of mind, of course, riding the school bus, and what happens if the child uh, does get sick with any type of, uh, of symptom. Those are very good questions. Let's start with the school bus one. The school bus one, I would prefer the kids wear a mask, regardless of the age, during that, during that time. The, uh, the one about the symptoms, again, uh, we know that we're going into cold and, cold and flu season. We're going to be handling those uh, one, at, one, one at a time. The first thing that we tell parents is if there's going to be a screening process that parents, uh, there's an online form that they're going to have that they can put in every day their symptoms. Uh, and uh, if they don't have any symptoms, they go to school. If they, if they have symptoms, then they stay home and they call public health, and then we can manage that. In most situations, what we'll do if the symptoms are, um, and, and it also depends on the contact, but let's say a child gets sick, um, you know, we're going to assume that it's, we're going to make sure that we, it's not COVID. So likely we'll, what we'll do is we'll speak to the family, speak to the child. The child won't go to school. We'll test the child. Uh, if the test is negative, then the child can go back to school once he or she is feeling better. So we're going to be taking it case by case. Um, and parents should know that we have not, we're going to hire nine school nurses, new school nurses that are going to be supporting all our schools in our area to be able to you know, facilitate any questions that the school has, the parents have uh, regarding uh, those situations. I'm, conv I'm, I'm very confident that uh, with the measures in place, the screening, uh, the masking of grade four and above, the masking of the teachers, uh, the distancing that we'll be doing in the in the in the classroom for the younger children. I think that we'll be uh, we'll be uh, in good shape uh, coming come the fall. The other thing that is very important to realize is that the better we are in the community outside of the schools, the, the safer the kids are going to be inside the schools. So that's why it's important for us to keep the numbers down. So it, it's a twofold. Number one. Outside of the schools, as a community, continue hand washing, continue masking, continue social distancing. Within the four walls of the school, the same, and the precautions that are going to be taken. Um, and, and so those are the two key elements that I think will assure as normal a return to school as possible. Will kids, will we still have COVID cases? Yes. Will we have overwhelming number? Not if we do what we can, what, what, not if we continue doing what we're doing well now. Uh, absolutely, and maybe just as a follow-up, I'm sure many uh, viewers are wondering, uh, should the, uh, a child uh, test positive, what happens then with the class and the rest of the school? Okay, that, that depends. That's a case-by-case. Case. That's a very good question. We definitely, obviously, the child won't go back to school. We will do an immediate contact tracing, the same that we do with any case. We will we will go to the school. We'll visit the, uh, everybody and say, okay, where was the child sitting? Where was the child in contact with? When did the child get sick? Who else was he close by? So it, it would range from um, testing others around him, sitting around that child, uh, to the whole class, uh, disinfecting the class. So it de it depends on the context, depends on the timing. For example, if a child was sick over the weekend. Um, you know, or, or and hadn't gone to school in a couple of days before that, there's less of an issue than if the child got sick, you know, while at school in the middle of the week type of thing. So it all depends, but rest assured that we will have the contact tracing process in place and prioritize those kids, make sure that we isolate and identify any children that are at risk or any staff, test them and isolate them appropriately. Excellent. Well, on that note, Doctor, uh, these are all issues that, of course, we'll continue to follow uh, week by week. Uh, but I'd like to thank you for joining me for this week's update. No problem.